Good tidings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Landy Lodge podcast. Before we launch this episode, we have some special people we need to thank, those special people being the sages of the Lodge, those who donate monthly to keep the Lodge moving. If you'd like to become a sage of the Lodge by donating as little as a dollar a month, you can find a link in the episode description, be it whether it's on YouTube or any of the audio platforms. So, Thank you to everybody, thank you to the Sages of the Lodge, and thank you for tuning in. And without further ado, let's get on with it. Ladies and gentlemen, the sickos and the normies, I bring you a treat today. I bring you two men who are better than I to talk about the always interesting Kingdom Hearts series, but more specifically... Union Cross. But before we start diving headfirst down these rabbit holes, I want to give both you gentlemen a chance to introduce yourselves, uh, let the audience know what you're about, and why it is you love Kingdom Hearts so much. So whichever one of you wants to go first, the floor is yours. Lance, go first. I'll go first. <laughs> um, I'm Lance, and I'm a master. You know, I'm a massive Kingdom Hearts fan. I've been a fan since day number one. I got the game the week it came out and ever since then it's consumed my life um and I'm, i love it because of the the law and, and like the last uh last year or so i've gotten really into like the combat and the gameplay and doing challenge runs and whatnot that's kind of what i'm in love within the series right now but i definitely still love the law especially in union cross and it makes a lot of sense that we're talking about Union Cross today because, in my humble opinion, Union Cross is the best law in the entire Kingdom Hearts series. So, yeah, that's what I love about Kingdom Hearts as it stands right now. Cool. There we go. A nice, a nice bold statement, and I think that's gonna what's gonna make talking Union Cross with you so enjoyable. Uh, Pete, floor is yours, man. All right. Well, I'm Lunar Lux, also known as Pete, whatever you want to call me. Uh, did YouTube for a little bit then moved to Twitch, and then uh, took a break from everything. But, you know, I'm still a huge fan of Kingdom Hearts. I love it. It's my favorite game series. It's just I've, everything about it. I think the one thing that I love the most is obviously the theme of friendship. I hold my friends very dear to my heart. I try to do everything that I can for my friends. And I just I see a lot of my personal values being portrayed in Kingdom Hearts. So that's why I've loved it all these years. So that's definitely it. <laughs> Beautiful. Very, very well said. Couldn't have said it better myself. So... Fellas, where do we start? So many places to start. Do we start with the Master and Lushu? Do we start with the Dandelions, the Foretellers? Where where do we start this rabbit hole? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Lance, what do you think, dude? I have a question. Like, um, you know, in the last update with the Master and Lushu, is this like is this after back cover? It see it seems implied so that that would be my like guess. at the end of back cover it's implied that Lusu just like goes away doesn't come back, but you know we see him and the master like back together again. I would really like to see what happened in between the time we saw Lusu drag in the box and the recent Union Cross update with them talking about the Union Leaguers. Oh. Yeah, it's it seems to me like. Like, Lu Shu like, like, out on your own, oh, out on his own, does remain within the periphery of Daybreak Town, right? Like after he had already gone his own way, Ava found him like right outside the town, just watching. So while he seems like he went out on his own, it does always seem to be that he's in the periphery somewhere. Um, do you think this is a this is a weird uh, sort of thought I've been having lately when it comes to the Master and Lucio? Because Lushu trips me out with all the body hopping and the fact that we've never seen what his yeah, actual yeah, body sure. looks mm -hmm. like. Do you think his connection to the master is any deeper than just master and protege? Or do you think there's something else going on there, guys? Well, that's know. that's actually really interesting because one of my first videos that I made, it was awful. Don't look for it. And it was kind of like a tinfoil hat theory with no backing. I was thinking but about I, that video today. It was more so a discussion, okay? And I was sort of just trying to, like, get my thoughts out there. And I always thought it was incredibly interesting that the Master and Lushu are, like, total opposites of one another in terms of, like, you know, what we see from, like, Union Cross and Back Cover. Like, Lushu's very, like, 
naive he's shy he's very like kind of just like oblivious and just doesn't really you, you know what i'm trying to say and the master's yeah. very like sure he's not too serious he jokes around he's so like i always thought that like there's like that master and student dynamic but they're also just like super duper opposite and i don't think that that's by accident unless it's just good writing it could be but i always thought that that was just something interesting i don't know where i was going in that video i haven't watched it in a while but <laughs> no but you do bring up a really good point that like usually when you have a master and a protege the master almost sees themselves in the protege so mm -hmm. it is peculiar that the master sees lushu who is at times like you mentioned apprehensive can be hesitant shy who's the exact opposite to the master so I don't know if that plays into his plan at all, and that's why Lushu's the only one that can handle his role. But look, the master master leaves us with way more questions than he does answers. I think that's what makes him every time a really <laughs> fun character. Do you guys, if you had to right now, just shot in the dark, who is the master of masters? What would you guess? <sighs> shot in the is dark, it... no stock in it. Just shot in the dark. Well, I have this feeling in 2019 that and, and Pete knows about this one. <laughs> Yes, I used to believe that it was Ephemer, and I had this like really detailed thread on Twitter on why that was Ephemer. But you know, the last like two years or so, I don't think that's the case anymore. I I think he is. Um, I think I think he's who you think he is in your in your video you made last year, Alandi. That I think he is. I think he's white. I think it's the opposite of darkness. Yeah, you sh you showed me that video and I was like, oh my god, this guy's got like the biggest brain ever. Like that's totally like I totally agree with that. Um, well, but other than that, like I, I think he's going to just like he said, if he is light, that's great. If he's someone completely different or his own character, that's also great. If I had to pick one character that he would it would make sense in some way where he's already somebody that we know, I, I think Sora from a different timeline or whatever, <laughs> like you don't say that, that. that but that would just be like of course, you, you know, make it's like that work. Of course. Like that it, could be woven it, into the plot. That could definitely yeah. work. If Sora was the master of masters, there's a way to work around that. I had a very weird thought the other day. Cause like, I like my theory. I don't necessarily subscribe to it. I, I think it's definitely possible. I'm all in on your do, But this is Kingdom Hearts. It could, it could go anywhere. So I'm not, as much as I would love to see it come to fruition, I'm not going to put too much stock in it. I had a random thought that maybe, maybe it could be Riku. Because when I'm looking at Quadratum, right, it's almost like this mirror realm between unreality and the world that we've known all this time. And everyone sort of has their parallel self. You've got Sora and Yazora who parallel one another. It remains to be seen, but seemingly Kyrie and the Nameless Star might parallel one another. And I'm just looking around, where's Riku's parallel? Yeah. You know, I, I, don't, I don't know. It's something that's been swimming around in my head a lot lately. When I think about everyone that's involved right now i don't know random thought what do you guys think well, i'm just taking i mean the dark going going back to that i mean you could also argue that there could be a reason why like the master of masters and riku are together or there's the master of masters riku sora and yozora in the secret ending for kingdom hearts 3 like the four of them are there for a reason you know obviously it's not by accident so if you are taking the parallels between like Sora and uh, Yazora and then applying that to like Riku and the Master of Masters, that makes sense. But isn't it? Then that's that's kind of where I got the idea where it could be Sora though. Because I looked at it just from like the other way where like everyone's like, oh, Yozora looks like Riku. Yozora looks like Riku. It's like, oh, well then Sora is the other piece of the puzzle with the Master of Masters in that scenario. So I guess it just depends how you look at it. But yeah. <laughs> yeah so well, I think that's part of what makes this character so interesting is that you know, I feel like everyone has their theories they subscribe to, but it really, it really could go anywhere. And of course, um, I don't know if I've said this yet, but when it comes to Union Cross as a game, for me, I, I'm not able to play it all the way through. I owe the world to channels like Everglow and Damo, who yep. translate these things, summarize these things. Legends. Big shout out to them. They're yep. the whole reason I'm in on it because I personally am unable to get through the game, but. The Union Cross movie are some of my favorite cutscenes, fight scenes, dialogue. Absolutely. Do you think this game ever gets more HD cutscenes or anything? It sort absolutely of HD needs it, hundred like, percent. I mean, I feel like we kind of got that in Melody and Memory. Like, I thought it was just me, but like the the fight between Kyrie and Master Xehanort was like so much better than almost anything we yeah. saw in Kingdom Hearts Three. It was so much that more. That was a like, good fight. Out I and give organic. You that. that was a good fight. Oh, yeah. It was more flashy, you know? 
So I need more of that. I want to say also that we need that Ava and Lusu. Let's see, we need that. Oh, totally. That needs I to need happen. That. I want to see that. I want to see. I want to see um, Loiam and Stilexia in the in the field of flowers. I need that. I, I want to see Lorium going after Ven, and then mm-hmm. I think Ephraimer throws his keyblade. I want to see that too. I want to see that, man. <laughs> Christ. Totally. Oh my lord! But I speak- wasn't even cross. <laughs> yeah. But speaking of the Dan Alliance, um, so where do they all end up at the end of this? We know where some of them goes, right? We know where Ven's going to end up. And do you guys subscribe to he's going to end end up there by way of the arc? Or do you think there's going to be something else that goes on that transports him? Hmm. I mean, yeah, the arc's going to come into play, I think. They're not going to just throw that in there for no reason. <laughs> like, yeah. I definitely think it'll come into play with him, for sure. Especially with, like, Xehanort and all that stuff and, like, him showing an interest. Like, he he knows who Ven is. He knows where he came from. So since, obviously, you know, as what we found out in Melody of Memory with the arc and everything and how it ties to Union Cross, mm-hmm. it almost entirely makes sense for that to be the case. So we have an idea of where Scold went, right? She ended up as Subject X. At least that's the pop- popular conception right yeah. now. What yeah. happened to Ephemer? Where is he that he was able to reach us at that critical moment in the Keyblade graveyard? Like, where is he going to end up at the end of this that gives him that sort of access? Any ideas? He might be dead. And you know, like, you know how Ericus <laughs> appeared at the end of Kingdom Hearts 3? Yes. I think it could be, it could be something of that effect in the way he helped Sora. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because Ericus is, I mean, Ericus is dead. Maybe Ephemer was dead. Maybe Vex. Yeah, he was. He, he never physically like manifested. He was only like sort of in a vision. I am. Yeah, maybe. Maybe he's a a sacrificial hero. Maybe he sacrifices himself to get people like Lorium and Elena and um. You know. Uh, yeah. Maybe. You know, maybe. Um, I mean, I know Eric. Maybe uh, Ephemer was in a vision, kind of like, kind of like, like that. He was able to help Sora. I was asked us to start on the dark theory with that. I like to I like to see where uh, we go with that because I'm sure that was so up again in the series of uh, mm-hmm. of how that so. came to be. But that's just that's why I think it's a possibility. I mean, for me personally, I have no idea. Ephemer is one of those very rare cases where I can't even guess, dude. Like, I have no <laughs> idea where he is, what he's doing. I liked the theory that he was the Dark Inferno, but since we now know that there's multiple of them and there's not just that one, that's kind of tossed out the window. So I have no clue. Ephemer, I've, I've got nothing on him. <laughs> well, okay, Zero. so maybe here, maybe I could re- rein us in on something we might know. Is, was Sterlitzia Marluxia's guardian at the end of Chain of Memories? How do you guys feel about that one? I'm all in on that. I'm, I'm kind of all in too. I'm all in. 100 on board with it. Absolutely, I'm absolutely all in on that. Speaking of another scene, I would love to see sort of put in 3D or CG is like um, so that vision dream Lorium has when he's laying in the flower fields. Yeah. And yeah. Comes in oh, with that'd be beautiful. Coat. Like, come on, man. Beautiful. You think they find a way to bring her back, or you think she's going to be one of the few gone for good cases? Gone for good. Gone for you good. You think so? I think so. They gone for good. I, I she will she will appear like in in not like maybe like an Ericus kind of fashion, but she, she's gone. Like she's I kind of like, want to see Lorium go go the distance and do everything he possibly can mm-hmm. to bring her back. That's really where I want to see his character go now that he's recompleted. I do want to see. I kind of want to see. I kind of want him to see her. Like I, I know I referenced this previously. I want to see. I want. Him to see her like Aqua, Ben, and Terra saw Ericus before he uh, moved on. Mm. I could get down with that. Well, I'm just saying, man, we, I know it's Kingdom Hearts, but I've been saying this since before Kingdom Hearts 3. We need some casualties soon, man. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I, we do. I, I mean, I'm all sure we, that all you, we have is uh, Zeno and uh, yeah, but that was that was like pretty predictable. But for me, it's like I love, I love getting emotionally abused i I love being like sad and getting upset every now and then like yes that that makes me fall in love with a series or the writing or the characters more when like you lose them like in any anime or movie or tv show whatever when a character dies it makes me feel some type of way and i feel like that's one of the only emotions kingdom hearts hasn't made me feel yet 
So if Strelitzia or whoever, you know, we're talking about becomes like that one, like, oh, they're dead, they're gone, then I, you know, I, w- I want that. But <laughs> it's Kingdom Hearts, man. I don't know if they'll do it, you know? All right, so if you had a if you had a write off one of the guardians, if you're killing off one of the guardians for emotional clout, who are you killing off? Riku. 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 Oh, <laughs> did, you, you like, did you rehearse that? No. No, we didn't. No. Riku. Hundred percent. <laughs> Riku sacrifices himself so Sora and Kyrie can be happy together or something. Yeah, because he's my favorite character, and I've I've said this multiple times. Like I think that Riku had arguably one of the, he had one of the best character arcs in the entire series, and if I feel not like the best. Yeah, if not. Yeah. So at the end of the day, you know, I feel like one of the reasons why Riku kind of felt like just to the side at the end of Kingdom Hearts three is because, or just in Kingdom Hearts three in general, was because what more could you really have him do? I guess. So yeah. like, I felt like, at that point, <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying though. So like his character feels like complete at this point, you know, he went, he played like the bad guy, the anti-hero, whatever. And then he, he overcame darkness and then he put Sora's memories back together. And now he controls darkness, defeat an anthem. It's like, what more can Riku do? Except yo, save yo, more. I, I I got, I got point. So it's like, what if, uh, <laughs> what if in Quadratum, Yozoa kills Riku. Oh, that'd be fire. That'd when be he's fire. dying, when he's <laughs> dying, he says, what? save Soa. And that's where you saw her uh, oh, 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 Nothing but net no. for lands right now. <laughs> nothing hold but on, net. Bro. Hold on, hold on. That's uh, that's big brain, dude. I love that. That's <laughs> a little next level. That's, that's a little like next top level. ever, bro. I love that. That's I good. Hope that happens. That's so, really good. I'm I like Momoa all my pops if he has the balls to do that, <laughs> dude. <laughs> that's too good. I love that. Holy That'd cow. be something else. That'd be something else. Um. So I guess if we want, I guess while we're on, Quintana, I got so sick about this right now. <laughs> kill Riku, please. Do it. Do it like that. Yeah, kill everybody's best boy. I'm sure no one will be upset about that. Um, <laughs> but I'm with you guys. I'd I'd love it. I I'd love it if they if they do it well, obviously. Um, but yeah. let's tie Quadratum to Union Cross since we uh, seem to be in that realm. Are Luke Sword and Demix? from Quadratum or do they originate from Daybreak as well? Cause I feel like the clock's running out and they haven't shown yeah. up and they'd almost just feel thrown in at this point. I definitely think Demix is part of Quadratum. I had, just, I had another fun theory too. I bet he's like, I bet he tags along in Baba Zuzoa and his friends all the time. And then he'll like, when they, uh, I think they'll all get in trouble at one point and that's how Demix gets caught up in all this mess is because he dies and that's how he becomes a nobody. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm I'm positive Luke Sir just comes from there. Like, there's there's no way he doesn't. Demix Absolutely. is so like I'm glad that they're kind of saving him for last because he's like you know he's like that guy. He's the layup. He's whatever. So like, I think they're purposely saving his origin reveal like very for last. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's it it would just make sense if the two came from Daybreak Town, two came from Quadratum. So I would say Quadratum, but. That's kind of what I'm Demetrius on the else. streets of Siberia trying to get he's selling his he's selling his CD, he's selling band tickets to try to get people to come to Oh, he's show. one of the guys who come up to you in the city and just tell you you gotta listen to my demo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, yes. 100%. <laughs> in that case, I've I've met plenty of Demix in my life. Uh, I was a Demix. You were you were a Demix. <laughs> how, how, you're a Demix. I was a Demix. You yeah. were Demix. you all those years ago. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. I almost want to completely trail us off that and ask you to tell us about the Demix years. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe another time. Another time. Another time. Um, mm. But uh, I know we were talking in the pre-roll about maybe making some predictions for where all of this goes. Is there anything swimming around your guys' head that you may want to get out? Something you think you might see happen uh, here at the end? Well, one thing I'm just talking about, like something that could potentially happen, like going forward. And I kind of memed on this the other day, but then I started realizing, like, damn, they could do that, and it would make a lot of sense, and that would be crazy. If but if they did, they, and me and Lance have talked about this before too, is like they need. I feel like that it would be a very good idea. That doesn't mean they'll do it, but it would be a good idea to do a collect a key saga collection. And of course, with the whole re 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 with Kingdom Hearts, it'd be called the Rekey. Riki, yes. Rex, it, it, 
Barum Rex. Like, <laughs> I, it just, it, the lines just connected in my brain. And I'm like, that's not going to be by accident if they do that. But like, Absolutely regardless not. of what they do it or Absolutely what it means, Key Saga needs something. Yeah, the Key Saga needs needs a little bit more love than the app. Like, of course, our, you could argue, well, it's the most accessible because it's free and it's for your phone, but that turns a lot of people off. Like, you even said you can't even get through the game, and a lot of people don't want to look at it. I cut. tried. I tried. Oh, yeah. I really did. I have a love for this series that I was it's hard. really looking to do it, <laughs> but then I I saw there was another way. Um, yeah. But let's – uh, what about you, Lance? Do you have anything you predict might happen? Um, I don't know if you guys saw this tweet. This is an old tweet from last year. There was a tweet where somebody, it was a fake tweet. Somebody like, it was like a fake Union Cross update. It was like the roof of was directly a dive and it had Skull and Hoodig figure on the roof and it had like the sky was like the Blake, like the Blake that you, the Blake color that you saw in uh, Skull and Kylum. It was like that rug sky and everyone on my timeline was like, Break! It's coming! It's coming! <laughs> and then it ended up being like, like, like it was a fake tweet. Hmm. It, it was like, yeah. it was so believable. It was put well. It was put together so well. But um, I envision the ending. Moon Cross is, um, I think it's going to be the reveal of Lucy's like original persona. Like whatever happens, we get a face reveal. Is that what you're yes. saying? Yes. Well, I, I feel like it's it's going to be, sorry if I cut you off, but I, the end of Union Cross and the Key Saga and all that stuff, it's going to be kind of like, I don't know if you guys are Star Wars fans, but like, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Rogue One, it's going to be a lot like that where you know how it's going to end because how else would it affect, you know, what happens going forward, right. except for like giving you a little like sprinkles here and there. But it's going to be one of those, it's going to end tragically. It's not going to end well. No. There's going to be a lot no. of, you know, mind twists here and there, but... I just think generally it's going to have that same effect where you're like, oh my God, is it going to, no, of course it's not going to go the way because it's going to go the way that it has to go. So it's going to, it's going to be interesting, man. And like, did they, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm behind on it, but like, did they, is it ending soon or did they say when, or I, I don't know. announced I, an update. Yeah. I, I can't. Yeah, the last update was the last one we, we saw together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which by the way, watching you guys uh, react to union cross is a, uh, is a joy to watch. I, I have to, that's thank where you. I got the, I, that's where I want, where I figured I would reach out to you guys. I was tuning into the stream. Yeah, thank you. I was like, I love I watching that. I was like, this is, this sounds like I should reach out to them. Ask them to talk about this stuff. Cause it was really interesting to listen. We, to we all love union about cross. It. Of course. All three of us do. It's, I mean, how could you not? So, yeah. Um, it was among us. That's a series. <laughs> Oh, um, Jesus Christ. Um, what was I about to ask you guys? Damn it. We were talking about like how we envisioned the end of New Cross would be. Yeah. I think the, in addition to what I said earlier, I think it would be like, you know the final secret report? Uh, the number 13 secret report? Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be Lusu saying those words as uh, he reveals. Yeah. Those words. yeah and then definitely. Get, uh, Wouldn't that be crazy that they could, they could blow our minds with Two different Lushu face reveals. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's gonna look. I think he's gonna have silver hair. Silver hair. I, I think he's going classic I think, anime trope. Yeah, yeah I right. think that because I because you see in Dream Drop that um, when um, Zegbal goes back to being human, he he does he doesn't age. He's he's break again. He doesn't age. So I think it's like a telemote thing where the person who possesses another person has some of those features. And I think that's going to explain why Sigball has that silver hair, that, that's, that black and silver ah. hair. So because it's almost like a fusion of possessed. the body he stole and the body he had. Yeah. I think yeah. That, that's, that's my fear on what Lucy will look like. Hmm. Interesting. I yeah. believe that since 2019. After I beat, that's pretty good. Okay. I can see that for sure. Uh, there's something. There's a trend I've noticed, and I wonder if you guys and like I, I'm pretty certain this has existed through Kingdom Hearts, but it's something Union Cross really opened my eyes to. Where in one of the recent updates, Darkness sort of revealed that he's a collective being. It's an us. It's not an individual. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if like part of this series, the whole thing is. What you have on one side is self-realized individuals working together. And then you have like 
an empty collective, right? Because this is sort of how the organization and guardians functioned, where the organization were just empty husks to Xehanort or Xemnas, both of them had the same use, um, versus guardians who were just these individuals who worked together. They didn't sell themselves out to an ideal or a cause or to an organization. And I'm, so I think we're starting to see that populate at like a bigger level between light and dark in general. Like darkness just leads you to this empty collective, whereas light leads you to this self-realized individual. Hmm. There you go. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Uh, let, me, let me try to take that in real quick. Hold I, on. I think I'm on to something. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> definitely. I mean, like, if there's one thing that I've learned, man, it's like, if something seems like it could be a thing, it's probably a thing because Nomura doesn't do things by accident. There's no, there's no such thing as coincidence. There's, there's no such thing as, oh, well, that just happened now. There's you a mean reason the arc in Kingdom Hearts 1 wasn't just there for decoration? Nope, and Mickey losing his shirt wasn't because they couldn't come up with a design either. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a counterpoint to that, though. But the Fault Towers, the Fault Towers are beings of light, but you know, they say Kingdom Hearts, you need a good balance of light and darkness, but the Four Towers don't believe in any darkness whatsoever. It's kind of like, um, just to make a good comparison here, you know, uh, you guys know Inside Out? I'm, I'm familiar, familiar with the concept, but I never saw the film. Okay, make yeah. it to Joy, like, it's, um, she's based off, like, uh, she's very positive, but it's like a toxic positivity. And I kind of feel like it's kind of like the four towers all because they don't believe any any uh, darkness whatsoever. And um, so like not that, and not that they're antagonists. That's another character character is called sadness. And obviously, you know, sad darkness or whatever. And she doesn't believe anything that's that's uh, light either, or anything that's like happy. So you know, they kind of they class in the movie. And at the, at the end, they kind of realize that they need each other to kind of to have a good balance. You know, I, I guess kind of what I feel like the, the joy, the, the character joy and the foretellers of light, I think they represent that end. And then like sad is represents darkness and, and sadness and they come together. So I kind of feel like um, with the series, the future of the series, we have the four towers who are don't believe in darkness and and darkness who don't believe in any light. So it's kind of what I'm trying to say is there's no like middle ground between those two uh, those two ends of the spectrum, and it's gonna be interesting to see like how the other characters are going to deal with that. Like I think they'll all be in the caught in the middle of this of this uh, of this wall between. The four tellers and darkness. Yeah, dude, I think it's going to be very interesting to see how the four tellers react to someone like Riku who can. Yeah, I posted darkness. the other day. Yeah, yeah, on Twitter. yeah. Yeah, it's 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 very well set up, right? Because just to get into what you were saying about the concept of like happiness and joy being on like the light side and sadness being on the dark side, is you can be all happy and positive on the light side to the point that it's so much light you're blind. You know, you're positive yes. to the point yes. that you reject reality, right? So it's like you do need to incorporate that other side of the spectrum in order to have a balanced perspective on things. At least I think that's what you were getting that's at. That's exactly what I was trying to say. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Perfect. Then I follow. Yeah, dude, it's going to be a time to see all these characters clash. Because when you think about, yes. like, when you really think about how many characters are in play right now, like, I know people talk about a Kingdom Hearts Warriors game. That'd be a great way for That'd everyone to get to know all these characters and get a hold on them. But it's like, I think there's almost too many characters to even cover a Warriors game. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, it's there's so many. Yeah, I know. Oh, uh, man. Like, when reason. I was doing my character tier list, like, one of the last times I streamed, I was like, dude, this took, like, three hours. Like, there's a <laughs> lot of people. Like, it's crazy. You make some bad decisions on that, by the way. No, I didn't. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> I know I didn't. G give me one bad decision. What bad decision stuck with you? Give I me think he put Sadness in, like, the end of B tier. No, I, no, I, I think I fought for Zendus to go higher. <laughs> no, I'm you pretty didn't. sure. <laughs> no? Maybe? No, you I like, have to find no, the tool. Kept, kept, to, kept to was fighting to go against it. You were kind of in the middle. I was, like, fighting for Sadness. <laughs> was it Zendus? 
Huh. I don't know. I know the well, one that I always... Saying, you guys are saying Ansem was better than Simmons. That's a well, close like, one like, for me. Like, yeah, I don't okay. know, Lance. That's <laughs> so, a close one for me. <laughs> I don't know. I can't remember, man. That was a long time ago. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we'll talk about my tier list another time. But um, what was I? I was going to say something. Oh, so like... And again, since we've been getting this idea of like... um. Like the physical like embodiment of like darkness, like being an actual like like a being or whatever. I'm looking forward to so if the master of masters isn't light, I want to see like what they're going to do because darkness can't just be a thing. Like light has to be a thing too, obviously. So I'm interested yeah. to see what how they're going to incorporate that. Like, is it just gonna be like this glimmering like silhouette? Like darkness is like this shadowy silhouette, or like I, I just want to know how they're gonna do it. What so that's if- something I'm looking forward to. What if, like, every time the master took his hood off, it just blinded everyone? Like, it's that kind of light <laughs> that just blinds you. It's too much, you know? Man. He, he's a light that wants no room for darkness, like you were bringing up, Lance. He wants a yeah. world completely without it. The idea, like, Xehanort had the idea of balancing the two. The master's yeah. on a whole other level. He's like, no, ju- let's just defy the laws of yeah. reality and get it the <laughs> hell out of here. Um, yeah. No, but one I, thing that I, it's just sorry, I didn't mean to cut you no, off. No, you're good. You're good. Um, but one thing I do want though is like I love how like you know throughout the entire series, darkness has been like, oh, you don't know anything, you don't understand anything. I, I want them to drop some tea on light. I want I want darkness to be like light is not as great as you think it is. So then it's gonna make us the fans question everything we've been doing this entire time. You know, fighting for the light, the guardians of light. If darkness has some secret about light and just exposes it or whatever and leaves it out there, like I feel like that'd be a cool twist too. I Something like that. We mind, but um, yeah. I think you have a you have a voice talking to Soa in Kingdom Hearts One. Yes, I isn't that I Mickey? I thought that was Mickey. I, I, think, I, think, I, think, I think I heard that too. I think, thought I it was never heard that to be Mickey. They could wreck on it though. You know, <laughs> we, I mean, it, sounds, it sounds a lot cooler than Stalinus, doesn't it? Yeah, I know. No, it really does. I always thought for a while. It sh- I thought it should have been darkness. They shouldn't have defined who that person is or who it is talking to Sora in that first yeah, cutscene. Did, did, but... did they ever define it though? I think it's been confirmed somewhere. I don't know the source. So I'm sorry that I'm just mindlessly saying, no, it's true. You, yeah, no, because I don't know like for Ocarina. sure. I've just heard that multiple times. Let's get a fact check. Can we get a fact check? In here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man, dude, I don't know. I think it was Namora or somebody did say it. Like, just oh. kind of dropped it casually. But, I mean, he, I have no clue. No idea, man. It remains- I wish it was, but. I mean, so much cooler than Mickey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What did you guys make of? Because a lot of people ran with this, and I never, I never quite bought into this idea. But do you remember in Remind before Sora goes into Ventus's heart, and Darkness talks to him? He asks, "Who are you?" Yeah. He says, "Darkness." Sora goes, "Venitas," and everyone kind of ran with that and just said, "Oh, maybe Darkness is just Venitas." But I don't know. What were your guys' no. takes on that? Because I'm, I'm, no, I didn't really many, buy into like, that. Like in the last update, there's there's many versions of Darkness, so. Yeah, Vanitas could just be one manifestation of it, not the he's just, manifestation. He's just one, man, he's just one man, manifestation of it, like you said. And he took the form of Sora because obviously yeah. everything happened with my sleep with um with Ventus well, going to Sora's yeah, heart. He, he's a he darkness. Out. He's not mm-hmm. the darkness, yes, you know? Yes, exactly. So, so that's, that's what I think. So... I want to talk about this Wreck-It Ralph world going on in uh, Union Cross because I think that is long overdue. I don't know if you guys have seen Yo, the Maggie's movie Wreck-It Ralph. Like, now, dude. <laughs> like, that's been going on for like... Well, they've been there for two years. I am not Jackson. I'm sure you're not. I'm sure you're not. These Every update we got is like... Not complaining, but it's it's crumbs. It's, crumb, it's a crumb trail. It's not a bread trail. Um, yeah. But... Do you think this is a world we'll have access to in Quadratum? Because some people have played with the idea that the Wreck-It Ralph world, because you have that they have that center hub, which is what you use to go to different video game worlds in the Wreck-It Ralph movies. This could very easily, if they ever wanted to incorporate square worlds, it could be done by way of a Disney world, which might be a loophole in whatever contract they have. But I don't know. The idea of wreck it ralph in kingdom hearts i know it's in union cross but the idea that this is something we could see in future 3d titles i think the the um the possibilities are limitless that'd be lit that would be awesome very very cool (laughs) do you think there's some sort of parallel going on here because the way um 
Do you remember when Braid said he wants to be a virus in the master system? Yes. That's kind of his vision, right? If you remember how Wreck-It Ralph ends, where, um, what's his name, Turbo, he turned out to be like a corrupt uh, segment of code. And he was this corrupt segment of code corrupting the whole um, candy racing world. Do you think we might see Brain actually end up doing something similar like that? He gets to a point where he's just this virus that is actually taking over the system, not just destroying it. Uh, so, I don't pay attention to the Disney cutscenes in the universe. <laughs> so, I have nothing on there in relation to what goes on I in the Disney world. But, I would like to see... I, I'm interested in what they mean by the whole virus thing, though. Like, is he going to be, like, a literal, like, virus? And, like, oh, I, I just want to see where they go with it. You know, obviously, we know from the secret reports, like, that it does... He is eventually a virus, or he does something like a virus. I just want to know what it is exactly that he's, like, he ends up doing or succeeding with doing. So, I mean, whether it's like that in the Wreck-It Ralph world, that'd be cool, but I, I just don't know how they would do it. So... I don't know Sorry. either. I just want Brain to be a big player. In a, Me too. in a story so much about hearts, I would love the idea that a character named Brain is just a large contender. <laughs> you know, I, I think there's something yeah. you could do with that. The, a conflict of Brain and Heart. Something like that. Yeah. That would be cool. Wow. He's probably my favorite among the Dandelions. Lorium a close second. I'll give yeah. Lorium a close second. Brain is a top Brain. five favorite character of mine. Who? He's great. Who's a top five? Brain. I missed that. Brain? Brains, yeah. Brain was really cool. Okay, well, sorry it took me four times to hear that. But <laughs> <laughs> do you, I don't know. I just think Union Cross has some of the coolest characters that the story has introduced to us. I mean, great. it's kind of hard. Like, you would think that somebody's nobody always kind of ends up cooler than them. Like, I prefer Roxas to Sora. That's just me. Um, but I think Marluxia and Lorium is an interesting case where I am far more interested in his somebody as opposed to his nobody. Yeah. No, Whereas I agree. Larxene and Elrena, I kind of feel the opposite. I don't, I, I'm not sure how they're going to move Elrena forward, but I know Larxene was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's just too many people in the spotlight in Union Cross. So it's kind of like, yo, make me care about her, you know? But yeah. <laughs> I kind of just don't. <laughs> she seems just kind of there right now. You know what I want to know about a little bit off topic. I want to know, you know, uh, the secret report that Skull, the Skull was wagging. I want to know where she was when she wrote that. Uh, which, which one? Because doesn't she write a few? Or am I? She writes a couple of them, but I want to know like where she is when she like the setting. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm interested in the gap of time between whenever they set off from this world and then whenever Xehanort gets a hold of her. I'm right. very interested in what happens yeah. in that window. And I maybe writing that report happens in that window, but it's a window I think, of time. I think the constant that the report is after like after C, after uh Blake lets her go. Oh. Interesting. Yeah, it's a it's after it's set after sees let go oh because she says yeah a guy with an eye patch like let her go or whatever right and he had like yeah. the keyblade or whatever yeah so where is she now writing that yes. to report yeah, on actually, what yeah, happened with her question. oh okay okay that's interesting that wow i guess i never really thought about it like that <laughs> um that's i don't know i don't i don't think i think i just assume she's missing i don't really assume where she is you know like i mean obviously she's missing but i just don't know where she is like she's she's somewhere she's probably writing that from wherever she is now which at this point could be literally anywhere it could be quadratum for all we know who the heck knows (laughs) who knows at this point dude i just it so so beyond me was i the only one who got their hopes up that scold was going to appear in remind I want no, to no, no, I don't no. Know I, why thought, I let it get in my I head. thought all of them were going to appear. You thought all yeah. of them? Yeah. I thought all of them were going to appear. That's me. That's my only like. You know, we mind has been the most fun I've had playing a video game in the last oh, year or so. Dude, but it's great. so good. In that great. store, in the in the we mind episode, I was a little disappointed that we got no evening leaders because I thought I thought we were going. To, I thought we were going to get some evening leaders tea in in the episode, but we didn't. Mm-hmm. Right. I thought we were going no, to see totally William and Skull, and all of them in their Kingdom Sager glory and bring in the Kingdom Sager, but we have to wait. 
We have to wait. Yeah. That day will come. I mean, the good news is it looks like looks like Square's doubling down on Kingdom Hearts pretty hard. It's gotten a lot. Like when you think about the amount of just story development we've gotten in the last two years between three remind Melody of Memory, Dark Road, and Union Cross. Oh That's yeah, crazy. it's, part, it's incredible. It's so great, and it's like I think part of what makes this series so fun to follow, especially with Union Cross, is like this story is always moving. We are mm-hmm. always in motion. There's always something new and something fresh to talk about. Yeah, I like um, that. Do you guys think we're ever going to see a connection between Union Cross and Dark Road? Do you think we ever see an overlap between the two of them? I think so. Because yeah. it's be based off like the beginning of Dark Road. And, but I think I think uh, Zayn wrote his flashbacks of events. Is, is that, am I correct? I think yeah, he flashes back. back to the player, if I'm not Yeah, I, I think we'll see some sort of connection there. Something. Like I know, Earth. like, when they were in the Alice in Wonderland world, you can see, it looks like darkness is behind the, um, what would you call her? The Queen of Hearts. So mm. they kind of have that sort of thing in common, that darkness is a presence both then and in Union Cross. Yeah. So... But, It'll be interesting mm-hmm. to see. Do you guys have any like last predictions about how this ends? Because <sighs> it, it, it's gotten to a place. And what do we make of, what do you guys make of actually, what do you make of us seeing Ava um, in um, Ventus's dream? That the, the darkness figure sort of morphed into Ava once it hit the light. It made me question literally everything that I've ever seen in this entire <laughs> series, man. I'm not going to lie to you. I had to take a step back and just be like, okay, so like, y- you know what I mean? Like if darkness no, can I'm do things you. like this, what else can it do at this point? You know? Well, it makes me wonder where Ava is. Is, did yeah. she, is she in the realm of darkness? Is that where she's been all this time? And that mm-hmm. gives darkness access to her shape. I don't know. I'm not quite sure how it works. I'll be open about That's that. Did it defeat her? Like, you know, I, yeah. I'm just curious as to how, like, what, what has to happen in order for darkness to be able to do things like that, you know? So it's interesting. Yeah. It really is. I do is. think it is a possibility, though. I do think it is a possibility that um, that Ava did fall the darkness because... Well, she started know, defying the master's rules and, the, you know, yeah. she kind of started mm-hmm. defying his plan after she spoke with Lushu. Yeah. yeah. And then also, at the end of back cover, she's talking to the dandelions and... She says anyone can fall the darkness, and the kind of fox for anyone kind of is different than all the other words in that sentence. So that kind of tells me it's like foreshadowing something. Yeah, go back no. and go back and watch it because it's like she says anyone can fall the darkness, and it's like the word anyone is is like italic kind of font, like different from all the other words in the sentence. And, the well, and that could be a lot of fun, right? Because what if in their search for Sora, the Birth by Sleep crew happened to bump into Ava? That would be lit. Well, that'd, that'd be really cool. That'd be oh, really nuts. Like that. There's wow. just so much they could do, and they set us up for so much. Um, well, yeah, because I mean, okay, so I guess that could ex- like the anti Aqua thing, you know, like darkness kind of like overcame her, and then it just popped out. Oh, here, here's scary Aqua. You know, that could be what it, it's it's hard to tell because it's Union Cross, but maybe something like that like happened. Like maybe Ava did have distinct differences, but we can't tell because she has the mask on, so you can't really see like her hair, her eyes, like other things like that. So right. she could be in the realm of darkness. I mean, and if there's one person to find her, I'd like it to be Aqua, definitely, just because. Hey, done there, done that, bro. I got you. <laughs> a- Auntie Ava. We find yeah, Auntie Ava. Ava in the book by Sweep King. Yeah. Auntie Ava, man. That'd be That'd fun. be scary. Those yeah. foretellers could do some crazy shit with those keyblades. That'd be a, yeah. that'd be a dope ass super fight. That would be cool. Yeah. I'm thinking, I'm, I love that. Yeah. I have a small prediction for the finale of Union Cross. Small What's prediction. Right? I might be getting my hopes up, and it's not actually a story prediction. I think in the same way they gave us back cover at the beginning, we're going to get like a 40 minute hour thing at the end. I'm just calling my shot. I think we might get it because I think they have a lot of these assets built out. I'm not saying it would be easy. None of this stuff is, but it seems like something that's within the realm of possibility for them. I I could totally see that happening. They need to give us one more, dude. I mean, I, I think the community is very loud and very, like we liked this, do this again. Yeah. We want these fights. We want this summary of the story, or we want this. You know, people mm-hmm. like it, and I think that Kingdom Hearts is really good at giving the fans what they want. So I feel like they, they could, yeah, 
They'll do and, it. And you know, and you know, guys, you guys know Square Enix likes money, so yeah, why don't they just make like a PS5 version of K- <laughs> Epic Game Store. <clears throat> What? <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Make, make a final mix version of KX3 Remind, and then make a package with that said movie, like you guys mentioned. Yeah. Call that package, Riki. Yeah. No, you're gonna have me thinking all night about that. The fact that that might have just gone over all our heads, very. Yeah. The, Unreal. The arrangement of those letters is not an accident, man. Oh, dude, Sorry. dude, I, I lost 30 minutes of sleep because of you tonight. What that said about me as a person, I don't know, but I'm an honest guy sometimes. Give me, give me one second. I'll be right back. Someone's about to come in. You guys keep talking, though. <laughs> right, we got this. We, okay. we, can, we can cover the airwaves. So what's going on, mister? What's going on? What's going on? Let's take a break from Kingdom Hearts. What's going on in the life of you, Lands? How are well, things? Uh, things are good. Stream's going great. I got my... 13 month anniversary of being a church affiliate. Congratulations. It's, it's my one year. I call it 13 month because it took like an extra month to get everything I wanted ready for the <laughs> event. So why not? I'm a big Kingdom Hearts fan. So why not call it 13 month affiliate anniversary? You're making the right call, man. We live by the Baker's dozen. Yes. And uh, yes, if you do. have, if you haven't already, by the way, everybody who's listening, please Follow my good friends here, Lands of Masters and Lunar Lux. You can Thank find you. them on. I appreciate both. that shout out. Yeah, baby. Don't worry. You know I got you. And I'll learn how to do shout outs in the Twitch chat one day. I promise. Um, back. And he's back. He's back. Hey, welcome back. Welcome Sorry. back. We, we weren't talking about you or anything. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, uh, but look, we are, we are actually coming up on time a little bit here. Um, oh. But I do want to leave enough time for you guys to get your last words in on Union Cross, uh, why you love it so much. Um, plug yourself, let the people know where they can find you, and uh, then we'll close this one out. You go first, Pete. All right, well, hey, man. I, I Union Cross is one of those things where I've been so back and forth with it. I'm like, are they doing things just because? Are they doing things because they're going to tie it in? How's it going to tie into Kingdom Hearts 3, Remind, Melody, Memory? And I feel like I had my, I had my little... I wasn't sure if they were going to do it right, but I feel like they're starting to really start to weave it in. I just want them to hurry because I'm getting really <laughs> impatient in a way where like it might be doing a little bit more harm than good. But the, the other good side of it is Union Cross and Dark Road are giving us somewhat consistent Kingdom Hearts content. It's somewhat of something to talk about all the time, like you mentioned. So I'm thankful for it. You know, in retrospect, once it's all done, I'm going to love the way they did it. It's just the way is just always... It's always there, but um, YouTube, uh, haven't uploaded there in almost a year. I don't know if I'm going to ever again. I might in the future, but um, twitch.tv slash lunarlux underscore. I'll stream. I'll definitely stream before I do YouTube again. Mark my words. That's actually coming up a lot sooner than it. You know, I anticipated. So just yeah. got to upgrade my computer a little bit. But I will be streaming, and then also I my Twitter content. Yeah, <laughs> but my Twitter, uh, Lunarlux underscore, at Lunarlux underscore, um, I'm much more active on Twitter than anything else. So, yeah, do it. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> Floor is yours now, Lance. Yeah, I'm a massive Union Cross fan. It's, um, I think it's definitely rejuvenated the series lore-wise because as much as I love Game Hearts 3 and praise it all the time, I do think there's some cross writing in there, in my humble opinion. But I feel like Union Cross has definitely rejuvenized the series of lore and brought a whole bunch of interesting outcomes to uh, come in the future. Um, and I can't wait to see what's coming. You know, me, me and Lunar are going to uh, react to whatever happens next. Uh, we, um, whenever there's an update the same day, we're going to wait all day because, you know, I think he works on, uh, he works till like eight o'clock. Oh, yeah, it's 7, 7.30. 7 o'clock, but you know what? It's going to be worth it to wait all day to uh, have that reaction. It's it's going to be hype. Oh, I, yeah. can't wait. I can't wait to uh, enjoy the rest of this ride at Union Cross. Because it's going to be a heck of a ride, for sure. Um, and you can find us reacting to um, the rest of the Union Cross story at my channel, Lancer Masters. It's all one word. 
Um, you can see a lot of Pokemon stuff as well. Massive Pokemon fan. I'm a big Mew fan. And um, see a lot of Kingdom Hearts stuff there too. Challenge runs. Um, in a couple of weeks here, I'm going to attempt critical level one in the Winter Cup with all pro codes. Ooh. I've been practicing that for the last couple of weeks fun. here. So kind of, I don't want to get my ass beat too badly. So definitely looking to um, showing everybody that content. There oh, we yeah. go. Very nice. But uh, before we wrap it up, I actually, I actually wanted to bring up the first time I actually ever saw anything you guys put out. Um, I'll start with you. I'll start with you, Lunar. Your channel ended up being like my, this voice of reason that I found for two reasons. I'll start with the more obvious one. One, when everyone was saying Demix was the master of masters, you put out this video that was like, okay, no. And I was like, okay, great. Great, there's somebody out here on this wave. Thank God. And I remember, um, you know, when we got the reveal that Zigbar was Lucio the whole time, I freaked the fuck out. I remember thinking to myself, I like, out, dude. am I a crazy person for freaking out like this? And I remember just typing in, like, reaction, stumbling upon yours, and just being like, oh, okay. I'm not the only one who lost their <laughs> goddamn I found mind too. when that <laughs> happened. Um, and Lance, for you, when I decided, like, on a whim to just make a Twitter you tagged me in something and I saw you had a Twitch channel. I remember tuning into one of your streams and dude, you were just like the most gentlemanly, like good vibe streamer who like Thank everybody so was much. just in the chat, having a good time. And I remember just thinking like this, this guy is built for it. So I oh just wanted God, to bring that so up for the two of you guys, you. everybody who's listening, whether you're on the audio platforms or you're watching on YouTube, give these men a follow on their platforms. I'll have links in their descriptions for you. They'll be tagged anywhere I can tag them. Guys, especially to you, thank you so much for doing this. It means the world to me that you Absolutely. would come on here. Thanks for being in the ether and spreading good vibes in the Kingdom Hearts community. Of course, thank um, I have nothing left to say. But that let's we're do it again. Here. Yeah, baby. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it again. Peace out, everybody. We'll see you all soon. Take care, y'all.